Hey guys, it's Rich and in this video I'm going to be talking about conversation and it's actually a subject I've never directly tackled before and that's because it is very very complex. You can have an interaction that is funny but not deep and the girl will like you or you can have a conversation where you connect deeply and you have no laughs at all and she could like you or you could have neither of those and you're just aloof and she likes you. So there's so many different ways to go that it's difficult to give hard and fast rules on conversation. But I'm making this video because for the past few weeks I've been working with a guy and it's a little bit different from my normal assignment. We went to a shopping mall and he was useless with the first 10 girls he spoke to and then he had five minutes of coaching and then he was great at uh, getting girls numbers. So you know day games quite easy so it worked very rapidly. But my assignment is to prepare him for a one hour date with a very you know tough and demanding lady. So working with him on conversation has been the focus of it and so that's how I come to this video and I'm going to give you some very cool conversation principles that I think apply pretty much universally. First thing that I told him, obviously there was a lot of stuff um, about body language, I told him to sit down and relax into whatever seat he's sitting in because he was perched on the edge and, and kind of fixed like that the whole time. I told him to gesture and be expressive when he talks and hold good eye to contact. So, so far, all things that you could guess. Uh, one of the things that he was doing that was a big mistake, in my opinion, was constantly smiling. So he'd meet the girl and he'd just be smiling immediately. Anything she said, he'd be smiling and nodding. And so we actually worked on giving him what I called a neutral face, where when he's got no reason to smile and, you know, he's not particularly happy that day and whatever he just has a, a neutral face and he, he'd do that and immediately was more attractive I took a picture of him like that and the other way showed it to all the girls everyone said he was way more attractive you know when he had his neutral face that can break into a smile or show different expressions but most of the time it's like that when it came to the actual conversation, first thing we worked on was uh, the structure. So he was asking a question, he was saying, you know, where are you from, what do you do, what hobbies do you have? And he'd ask, you know, three, five questions in a row. The girl would give the answer and he'd just say, cool, and then ask another question. Um, we changed the structure so that he would ask a question receive a response and then make some kind of statement on it. We did a lot of work on this because you can go from, uh, you can do this you know in a few different ways and at the most advanced level it's really 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 powerful so one of the things he asked I think was um, you know what do you like doing and the girl says she likes cooking and he immediately asked what kind of food and she said Italian food and then he was like well what kind of dish and she said oh this pasta with blah 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 and I was like why would you do that why would you um, why do you have nothing to say about the fact that she cooks? Why do you need to ask another question? So I told him, you know, what kind of statements could you make in that moment? He said, well, I could talk about, you know, how I don't really cook. I just do, you know, fast food. I use microwave or I eat out. And I was like, okay, so that's, that's one thing you, you could say, which would be better than another question. What else could you do? And we got to eventually the best thing, which was thinking about, you know, what she loves about cooking, how it can be a creative process, you know, how you're experimenting with different ingredients, about how when you invite guests around and you cook something for them, it's a social affair, it's nicer than in a restaurant, and you get to feed people and see their, their reactions, give them something new that they've never maybe tried before, and, you know, everyone likes having a good home-cooked meal, so it's, it's that feeling the satisfaction. So we got him to craft statements where he could start to imagine himself in the woman's shoes and think, you know, why would she love cooking? And then craft a statement where he says, so I guess that you feel blah, 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 or someone who cooks might do it because blah, 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 and then make this statement. What he noticed when he started doing this uh, because I actually got in maybe six or seven uh, practice dates when I was spying uh, with girls that he hadn't met before and he started making these kinds of statements that were going into uh, motivations and emotions behind people's actions and when he started doing that they were opening up more and you started seeing the expression change from just like a you know a polite smile to one that is genuine and they start becoming genuinely engaged so it starts with a basic structure you know question statement, 
deeper question or change subject and then it moves on to you know the statements being kind of boring about yourself or impersonal and then they become about you know her and why someone would do that so the structure of the conversation was the first thing we did and then he was having some amount of connection in the conversations there was still a problem of attraction and so um, I wanted to deal with this problem where you know he'd meet the girl and he'd just be smiling immediately and basically thinking I like her, I want to be with her just based on her looks and I don't care what she says. So I got him to write down a list and I said you know write down a list of the things that you'd like in a girlfriend and he wrote down 16 things and it was stuff like um, you know she has to support him in his work and the stuff he's doing, uh, she has to like children and animals and things like that. He had, 16 things, you know, she couldn't be too much of a party girl, uh, didn't want a girl that smoked. He had these 16 things. And I said, next time, you know, I arrange one of these uh, practice dates for you, I want you to come along and I want you to have in your mind, you know, okay, she's pretty, so my first impression is good. But the next thing being, I wonder if she has, you know, all of these things that I'm looking for. So that's the first part of it, is to change, you know, something in the body language, something in the inner game when you go on a date. But the second thing it does is it makes the conversation more interesting because you have a bit of a purpose. You want to find out these things, explore different areas. So that's, um, that's why I got him to do it. And then in his conversation, he started asking questions, you know, but... Uh, do you do this? And you know, he'd ask it with kind of a question in face, she'd respond and then he'd either approve of it or disapprove of it. So he'd ask the question but then he'd need to show why it was important that he asked. So he'd say, oh it's good that um, you know, you, you like animals because it means you know, you can look after, um, be responsible for something and I like animals, blah blah. So he gives the reason why you know, he, he is happy that she likes cats or whatever it is, um, which shows the reason for doing it. But in her mind she sees that he's selective, he's thinking about um, you know he hasn't just given her a free pass, he's saying you know I'd, I'd like it if, if you had this and this, this stuff's important to me. So that was, that was important. Then he started getting better attraction. Now the, the next problem, and this is something a lot of guys have, is that sometimes from time to time the conversation just went dry. So what I did was I took my book and because I'd forgotten what, what I'd put in there but I'd put in there some uh, questions for when you know you run out of stuff to say and just to put into a conversation and I've got uh, do you remember your first day at school I've got if you could wake up tomorrow anywhere in the world where would it be are your friends mostly men or women what's the one thing you can't say no to and what talents do you have that would surprise me so just a few examples from the book and what these do is, you know, they just bring some hopefully interesting conversation to, you know, that moment where you might have run out of stuff to say. So he started doing that, he liked the travel one, and you don't just say, you know, what do you do, where you're from, okay, if you could wake up tomorrow anywhere in the world, you lead into it. So you first think about, um, you know, you, talk, you ask her if she likes traveling and where she's been and stuff like this and then you ask that question and the other thing to make sure is that you've got a good answer to it so she might ask you and you how about you and you can't just say I don't know you have to be prepared that she's going to ask you back so we got him doing that and then it dealt mostly with that problem of you know running out of stuff to say in the middle of the, of the interaction Something else that changed a lot for him was uh, leading. So he'd meet the girl and because he was quite passive, a lot of women would just take control in that initial stage and they'd say, you know, where are you from, what do you do? And the same boring questions. But they'd be controlling the direction of the conversation and asking him questions. My view on this, uh, when women ask you questions, especially on a date or in... Um, social circle situations is that they might do it just to be polite so they might meet you and they might you know ask you things to take the lead in the interaction to avoid uncomfortable silences and stuff like that 
In that case, it's a big mistake to let them do it. It's very good to answer the first question, then take control, and you lead it from there. You need to lead the interaction towards your purpose, which is either you know connecting with her, uh, getting to know her better, seeing if she meets your criteria, uh, getting to the point where you can suggest a date, whatever it is, but you need to be leading towards your purpose, which means you should always have in mind the direction of the conversation. However, if you do that in the beginning and then she becomes genuinely curious, you'll notice that when she's asking you questions, she's really, you know, it's gone from just being polite, that kind of formality where they're like, oh, and what do you do, to being, no, but we've been talking for 30 minutes and you haven't even told me what, what you do, you know, what do you do? And she's looking at you and she's listening and she's very, very curious. So we've covered tons of things already, but there's more. Uh, one of the things that he was doing is the kind of bad listening face. So uh, the girls were reporting to me, it was, you know, it was almost like a scientific experiment. So I'd pause it, I'd talk to him, I'd talk to the girls, and I could see that the girls um, didn't like it when they were speaking because they didn't feel like he was listening. And that was because she'd be talking and he'd be like this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he'd be nodding too quickly and mm -hmm, like this and you could just see in his eyes that he's thinking of the next question that he's going to ask so we worked on that and I told him when she's speaking just you know look into her eyes try and build that picture of her try and understand what it's saying about her just let it wash over you and when you've done that pause think about it come up with the question then or what you want to say the next statement and then make it you know so be comfortable with the pause he started doing that and not only did it make them more comfortable speaking for longer but it also made him uh, able to generate a bit more attraction because you had that moment of cool you know intense eye contact so guys it's very strange because you know I've been doing training for the first time in many years for a TV show uh, but it's very cool because I've been able to uh, really identify how someone goes from having very boring uh, short conversations where the girls want to run away to having like a one hour date with a very demanding you know intelligent girl and it goes great so guys hope you like that uh, that's my conversation tips and I'll be back soon with more thank you